Hi everyone, welcome to Shrink Plastic 101. Here you will pretty much learn everything you need to know about shrink plastic. This will be great for beginners or anyone looking into adding shrink plastic to their crafting arsenal. So shrink plastic, what is it? Some people in the US may know it as shrink-a-dink and it's basically a plastic called polystyrene. Same type of plastic used in packaging, in carry-out boxes, usually labeled as PS6. So this type of plastic starts off as a thin film and shrinks when certain amount of heat is applied and it becomes thick and hard, which makes it very versatile because you can make all kinds of things, including charms, jewelry, and accessories. Nowadays, you can get different kinds of shrink plastic. They make clear ones, frosted or sanded, colored ones, and even printable ones. You can use different mediums to color before or after you shrink the plastic. For after shrinking, you can use pretty much use anything you'd like with no issues. However, for before shrinking, there are some limitations which I will be discussing. Now, important to note, any color that you apply to the shrink plastic will intensify as it shrinks down. So keep that in mind with different mediums you use. This applies with the printable version as well. You would have to lighten the colors before printing to get the desired color after shrinking. But before you start coloring, always make sure your plastic is free of oil so the colors stick better. Use some rubbing alcohol to clean the surface if necessary. Okay, so here are some things you can use to color your plastic before shrinking. You can use permanent markers, alcohol markers, paint markers, colored pencils, and soft pastels. For permanent and alcohol markers, they're best to use on untreated shrink plastic that is still shiny. When you use them on a sanded or frosted plastic, the ink will bleed through the fine scratches. For colored pencils and soft pastels, the surface needs to be sanded or frosted so the colors stick. You can buy already frosted shrink plastic, but I prefer to sand my own because the store-bought version has a very uneven finish with deep scratches. The colors won't lay down evenly. So to sand your own, use a 320 grit sandpaper and sand it in all different directions until there are no shininess on the surface. For colored pencils, you will get the best result with quality artist pencils that have soft cores. They have more pigment in them and because they're soft and not waxy, the color is laid down nicely on the plastic. Now for applying soft pastels, you're basically rubbing on the pastel. You can use a brush or even your finger. For paint markers, the only brand I can recommend to you is Posca Paint Markers. I've used different brands in the past and I always find myself going back to it. The paint will stick to both shiny and sanded surface, but better on the sanded. Now here's a tip. When using Posca, always paint it in one single layer. If you missed a spot, don't go back to fill it in because if you paint it on too much, the paint will crack during the shrinking process. You can always paint over missed spots after shrinking. Some mediums I would not recommend are crayons, oil-based markers, and acrylic paints as they will not survive the heat when shrinking. So I'll show you all the samples after shrinking in a little bit. Okay, so I do want to mention this because I don't see people talking about it. So shrink plastic shrinks more in one direction. And this is important to know because depending on the orientation of your artwork on the plastic, it can distort or make your image wide or elongated. Usually the plastic shrinks more in this direction in portrait. But this may depend on your brand, so the best way to check is to cut a sample and put it in the oven. 
observe which direction the plastic curls. The direction that curls is the direction the plastic shrinks more. So here's an example. Same artwork, but drawn in different orientation on the plastic. I hope you guys can see the difference. So because of this, I normally draw my artwork in landscape position. Okay, so you can cut shrink plastic with scissors or craft punches. With scissors, when you get to a sharp corner like this, don't force it and continue the cut as this will cause the plastic to tear or bruise. Instead, flip it over and cut from the other direction towards that corner. Also, if you want to make it into a charm, this is the time to do it. Use a craft punch to create a hole for the jump ring like so. You can shrink the plastic using the oven or a heat gun. When using an oven, follow the directions on the shrink plastic you are using. The most important part is to use it in a preheated oven. Even if you're using a toaster oven with no preheating function, just set it at a specific temperature and let it run for a few minutes. If you don't, your plastic won't shrink evenly and may distort it. So as the plastic heats, it will curl and shrivel up don't panic here because it will flatten itself eventually. If your plastic starts sticking to each other, quickly use a tool like chopsticks to spread it apart. But generally, to avoid this, it's best to avoid shapes that are long and skinny or have appendages. However, if your piece still keeps sticking to itself, put a cardstock or parchment paper over it to weigh it down a little so it won't curl on itself. Now, timing is everything with shrink plastic. As soon as you see your piece flattening, take it out of the oven. If you leave it in too long, first of all, you will burn it, or you will end up with micro bubbles in the plastic because as it gets too hot, literally it starts boiling from the inside. Now, once it's out of the oven, use a flat object and press it down gently until it's cooled off. Now with a heat gun, it's best to do it in a heat-proof container to prevent the air from blowing the piece away. All you have to do is apply the heat from a few inches away until it shrinks. From my experience, I can't get a consistent result with this method and it may have to do with my heat gun, but this method generally works with smaller pieces. For larger pieces, not so much because it's difficult to apply the heat evenly throughout the entire piece without causing any distortion. So the amount of shrinkage will depend on the brand. The one I'm using shrinks to about a third to half its original size, but some brands can shrink smaller. To get a rough idea of how big your original artwork should be, I recommend making a ruler like this out of the shrink plastic you are using. This way, you'll have a general idea of how much your artwork will shrink. As you can see from my ruler, mine shrinks a little more than half of the original size. So based on that, in order to make a decent sized charm, I make my artwork around 3-4 to four inches. Now, let me show you all of the sample pieces so you guys can see what each colored medium will look like after shrinking. Here's a permanent marker. I use the brand Sharpie. As you can see, you won't get an even finish. You will see the striation from the marker tip. Similar results with alcohol markers. This is why they're not my preferred choice for coloring, but I do like using the black Sharpie because it's great for outlining and when you color with it, it's dark enough to where you won't see those striations. And here's the colored pencils. They created nice, even, concentrated colors. And this one is with pastels, which will give very soft colors to your plastic. It's great for blending and creating ombres or gradients. And here's the one with Posca markers. Now the only medium that will give you an opaque finish is the Posca. So if you want to increase the opacity or to bring out the colors more, you can paint the back of the piece with white acrylic paint. The reason you don't want to do this before the shrinking is because the heat will ruin the paint. 
Now you may wonder which side you should draw on, which side to paint on, which side should be the front, and so forth. Well, this is all up to you and what you're looking for in the overall look of the piece. Usually I'll have the colored side on the back and sometimes I'll flip the image to accommodate that. When the colors are on the back, it looks cleaner from the front. For example, for this one, I only colored the back, whereas this one, I drew the text on the front and colored the back to give a nice layered dimension to the piece. So to seal your artwork on the shrink plastic, you have few options. Here is a list of what you can use. Number one, you can use a sealer spray. Number two, a brush on sealer. Number three, UV resin or two-part resin. Number four, dimensional sealers such as diamond glaze, dimensional magic, and embossing powder. Now if you use permanent markers, make sure to seal the ink with a decoupage medium such as Mod Podge before the sealer to prevent any of the ink from bleeding or smearing. If your sealer is water-based, then don't worry about it. If you are using resin, both UV or two-part, seal the plastic with a decoupage medium before the resin layer. Why? Because resin doesn't bond too well to polystyrene. The decoupage helps with that and it will prevent the resin from peeling off of the plastic. Now my preferred medium to seal the plastic is definitely resin as it gives a nice shiny finish. It transforms your piece and makes it look professional. If you want to learn how to dome with resin, click on the right upper corner. So that was pretty much everything. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope to see more crafters using this versatile medium. Comment down below and tell me what you would make with shrink plastic. I know 2020 has been a crazy year so far, so wherever you are and whatever you are going through, stay safe. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!